Hey guys, good morning. Happy Band Shirt Tuesday. It's Gabe, that's me. I am Gabe, the Oscope Wizard, and we're doing a show. We're making it happen. We just finished our quest to build an amplifier out of a Raspberry Pi and have it somewhat Sonos-like, and it, and it works, and I had a wonderful weekend listening to music very loudly, perhaps obnoxiously loudly. I apologize to my neighbors, but man, when you make a... A, a thing, when you make a thing and it actually works, I can't help uh, staring at it. I, maybe, maybe when I make a thing and it actually works, I can't help staring at it. Shouldn't put that on you. You're probably super humble and would never even acknowledge your awesomeness. But I, I, I you know what? You know what? I think it's awesome. It worked. I love it. But something came up. Something came up. For, before I get into that, though, before I get into that, Fan Shirt Tuesday. Which band shirt are you wearing? I'm wearing this one. I just got a new band shirt. It is for a band called Sylvan Esso. I am super pumped. Um, a couple of days ago, I got... I'm one of those people who buys the album and the t-shirt and the whole poster and everything. And, and I got a new album from them. It is sitting back there on the top of the records. Uh, and it's called With, and it is their live album. Normally, they're like a dance electronic music group, and they toured a few stops with the full band and did all their songs with actual live instruments instead of just electronic beats. And it is really cool and a lot of fun and, you know, crazy t-shirt. So, hopefully you are having a wonderful band shirt Tuesday, just like this guy. Um... The show today, the show today, I don't have my timer, so I'm going to have to keep track of this because we are going to make a lot of measurements. We're going to make a lot of measurements. It was brought up that the Raspberry Pi is quite loud. Actually, it wasn't brought up. It, th this reared its head on nearly every episode that we dealt with the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is quite loud. Where is that noise coming from? Can we measure it? Could we come up with a solution to make it quieter? So here, here, on my desk today, I have a very simple setup. Whoops, that is the wrong thing. I need to turn off that. I, the words need to go off. So I have a very simple setup. I have a Raspberry Pi that I just loaded up fresh with a copy of Raspbian or Raspberry OS. I think they call it Raspberry OS now, which is the base... Linux distribution you get for the Raspberry Pi. I got the minimal distribution, so it is the one with the fewest graphics. It's also the one that I could download right before the show started and put on the Raspberry Pi in the last five minutes. Uh, it's installed right there. I have my Raspberry... Oh, by the way, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B. It is the the previous generation, because we're on the Raspberry Pi 4, but I don't have a Raspberry Pi 4, and I haven't used a Raspberry Pi 4, but I've used a whole bunch of Raspberry Pi 3s. We got Raspberry Pi 3 Zeros, we got Raspberry Pi 3 um, Bs, I have in the amplifier that we just made a Raspberry Pi 3A. They all shared the same noise characteristics, and that's what we're going to measure today. I have it connected via Ethernet so that if we have to talk to it, I can talk to it. I don't think that we will have to talk to it. Um, then I have this handy dandy little breakout board that has all of the GPIO names on it so that, can it, I don't know if my camera can focus on it so closely. Maybe it can't, oh there, it's trying. It, there it is, there it is. So it's got all the names of all the pins from the GPIO so that I can easily plug it in. This is my trick so that I don't plug in to the wrong pin. If I don't have those names on those pins, I mean, come on guys, who's gonna remember this? There's 40 pins here, they're all very nondescript, to say the least. What are we gonna plug in? So we're gonna plug in power, and then, once I plug in power, oh, I sh should talk about the power. I'm using a battery pack, because I want the quietest power that I can get. This guy, not gonna add any noise, no EMI, noise, no switch mode noise, no noise at all. It is just a chemical reaction that is going to supply current or charge to my Raspberry Pi to power it up. Then, if I want to, I can add a switch mode power supply in there. So I have this little switcher from our 
project before, I could set it to go from 5 volts to 5 volts just to add a switch mode power supply to see what that would do to the noise. Finally, I have a whole slew of EM, uh, EMI near field probes that we're going to use to measure the top and the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. So with these probes, hopefully we can figure out where the noise is on this board. That is the question. It came up quite a bit, quite a bit. And one of the last questions that was asked last week when I was completing the quest was, could we figure out where this noise is coming from on the Raspberry Pi? Can we measure it? Can we figure out what chip is the culprit? So um, over here, I also, of course, have my handy dandy oscilloscope, my RTO 2044. It is way overkill for this particular measurement, but the RTO 2000, I just love it. It is tough to beat that FFT. So what do you say? Let's plug it in. Let's make it happen. Um, <laughs> the, the chat saying unlabeled header pins means nearly certain incorrect connections. Almost, and you know what? The same for me. The same for me. If these, if the pins are unlabeled, oh my goodness, we are, we are definitely going to make bad connections, but we're going to use my uh, super cheap multimeter here and my J clips. Thank you, Mr. Silverstein for the J clip advice. We're going to use J clips to go from my multimeter to my battery. And I just want to make sure that my battery is about five volts. Let's turn the light off for a second while we make this measurement. I think because I got some wild glare. I might be able to even go a little higher and point straight down. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So let's get the Raspberry Pi out of the way for a second. And we're just going to simply measure the battery pack to make sure that it is going to supply about 5 volts. Then we're going to plug in the Raspberry Pi. It's very exciting. And we are going to measure the noise. So negative to negative, positive to positive. Uh, turn it on. Turn on my battery pack. It actually has an on off switch. And there we go. Look, five, five point one four eight volts. That feels like that'll, that's, that's plenty of juice. That's plenty of juice. Okay. Let's make our connections between our battery pack and our Raspberry Pi. Set my multimeter to the side. Battery pack to the Raspberry Pi. I've got all kinds of cords and cables here today. What wizard wouldn't have all sorts of different cables and connectors? Basically, every day of my life, I get a random series of cables or connectors in the mail so that I can, I don't know, I can, I can just, I told my neighbor, I was like, I think I could adapt a faucet to an HDMI input. So if you had a water faucet, I could probably get that all the way to your HDMI input on your television. I got a lot of adapters and, and, and whatnot. So five volts, ground, turn it on. All right, we got activity. The activity light is rocking and rolling. Will it boot up? So we should see, there we go. The green activity light is going. If I get a little closer here, I think we can see the lights. Red activity light, green activity light. It goes through the whole boot sequence here at the beginning. Um, and eventually, eventually it'll be booted up. But as it's booting up, let's get my near field probe into the action. So I have my probe holder. Back out a little bit. I got my trusty probe holder so that I don't have to babysit this probe the entire time. I can just set it and forget it. And I can also use this probe holder to kind of move it around to different points of interest. So I want to start kind of measuring near the processor because I think that the processor is the culprit. I think that is the culprit. And I think that is what is causing all sorts of uh, noise on the ground plane. 
I think. So let's put this, see, near that system on a chip processor there. Huh? Huh? Really? There we go. That feels pretty good. Now that I have it placed over the processor, let's switch over to the oscilloscope and see if we can find noise. Allegedly. We shall find out. First things first, when you're dealing with the oscilloscope is, let's preset it because I am not sure what I was doing before. I know that I am using a near field probe, so I need to change the coupling to 50 ohms to match the antenna because I'm using a 50 ohm near field probe. So I need to make sure that the scope is set up for 50 ohms. I'll use the full bandwidth of the scope. We'll probably move the bandwidth settings around a little bit because I know that we're going to see some interference in two places. Two places you'll always see interference, and that is 2.4 gigahertz because, well, I have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi system in my house. Uh, you probably have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi system in your house. You also have a microwave that goes at 2.4 gigahertz. You have Bluetooth that, guess what? also hangs out at 2.4 gigahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz band is a very popular band. It's called the ISR band. Um, and lots of stuff sit in there because it's unlicensed, unregulated, or unlicensed, and um, that is where people have built their radios to sit. Microwave ovens are at 2.4 gigahertz because that's the frequency that oscillates water, and that's how they heat it up. Uh, that's a little side, side, side hustle knowledge there for you. Um, okay, now that I have this at least on the screen, let's shrink my scale so I can get a little bit more sensitivity. Okay, so five millivolts per division. So we're pretty little and we can see all kinds of noise happening where I am. Now I want a little bit more time. So let's say instead of 100 nanoseconds, um, maybe I can just do per division. Yeah, there we go. That feels good. A microsecond. That's a, a microsecond in electronics is an epoch. I mean, it is an eon in, in real life. We have been dealing with audio frequencies mostly, which are, wow, they are so slow. They are the sloths of of electrical signals. But today we're going to look at the whole band. So from DC to 4 gigahertz and see what it looks like. So now that I have it scaled on the screen, I probably should um, make it a little bit smaller just because I want to, what, you, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have the sensitivity setting of the scope such that I can pick up all the tiny little noise um, coming in through the antenna. I don't want to miss it. Um, but I also don't want to oversaturate, so it's, it's, it's a delicate balancing act. Now, let's do the FFT. Um, DC from 0 hertz all the way up to 4 gigahertz. Thumbs up. The resolution bandwidth we'll, we'll kind of play with after we start, but let's just turn it on and see what happens. Okay, right away, right away I see this spike happening right here. Let's put a cursor on that guy. Let's see. Oh, I probably need to just turn on cursors. <laughs> cursors M1. There we go. Where are we at? 2.4 gigahertz. Hmm. Like I said, uh, we will definitely have interference at 2.4 gigahertz. Why? Because, I mean, I got a Wi-Fi signal that is sitting right at 2.4 gigahertz. So that, that's, that's going to, that is going to dominate that noise. You would get that noise. That's not coming from the Raspberry Pi. I mean, it, it could be if the Raspberry Pi is searching for Wi-Fi. I don't, I haven't even turned on Wi-Fi. So the Raspberry Pi is not searching for it yet. Um, that is just the ambient noise of my room. But down here, we have some more exciting things happening. So I have something right here. So what's this spike right here? I bet it's 600 megahertz. Guess what is sitting at 600 megahertz? We've talked about it before, but I use these little wireless 
microphone transmitters and right now my channel is 600.15 megahertz so that spike that we're looking at right there if I move it over look I can move my transmitter over oh, boom so if I move my transmitter over close to my near field antenna you can see that ooh, that signal gets super big so that is being picked up from a wireless microphone now everything below 600 megahertz though that's raspberry pi that is a mess of raspberry pi stuff so i can see kind of above 600 megahertz and above it's pretty quiet except for this 2.4 gigahertz band so what if what if i do a little bit of filtering on my fft and i say my stop frequency should be i don't know 500 megahertz now let's look at DC to 500 megahertz, and maybe we want my resolution bandwidth to be a little bit smaller. So that means each little spike in this FFT is only going to take up, in this case, 200 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz. So very small space uh, relative to the huge span. I could even go lower. Let's see. I don't know. There we go. Going super low. Four kilohertz. Boom. Now let's look at, let's look at what is happening down here in Raspberry Pi world. I think what I want to do is change these cursors a little bit. So I have them set to, do I have them set to track the waveform? Yes, I do have them set to, oh my goodness. Now I have two sets of cursors. Ah, no, that is not what I wanted to do. I don't want two sets of cursors. All right, I do have it tracking the waveform. Perfect, perfect. I think that's I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I can see spikes down here. What is this? Let's see how far apart these spikes are. They look very regular. Six megahertz. Hmm. So is it going to be every six megahertz I have a spike? Let's go over here. Right here. Six megahertz. Hmm. So it looks like these spikes are separated by about six megahertz. I wonder, does my Raspberry Pi have a six megahertz? Um processor on it that that doesn't make sense i don't think but this is kind of how you debug this is how you would debug something like raspberry pi let's check out let's check out raspberry pi six megahertz let's see if anybody else has done more debugging than me Hmm. Anybody? People trying to make it work at 6 megahertz on the GPIO. Crystal oscillator 6 megahertz. Oh, let's see. Raspberry Pi oscillator. Oscil oscillator. Is that am I? Can I spell? I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. 19.2 megahertz for an oscillator, and then the Pi 4B is 54 megahertz. Hmm. Not sure what's going at 6 megahertz. Something, though. Something is rocking at 6 megahertz, right? Because I have those spacings at 6 megahertz. Um, let us move... Let's move the antenna around a little bit. So what if I take my antenna, I'm going to make, whoop, let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Yeah. Put it down here in the corner so that you can see what I'm doing. And we can watch the frequency change as I move this around. So... Move around. So I'm over here at the top. 
let's put it over this radio. So I have them over the radio. That's kind of noisy, but nothing like the top of the processor. Ooh, the top of the processor up here gets real crazy. If I move over here, this would be the power section of the Raspberry Pi where it comes in, powering it through here from the battery. Not a lot. Let's check out GPIO. Here, I can unplug this for a second. Or disconnect it from my arm. Okay. So you can see I'm moving along. I'm moving my antenna along the GPIO. Oh, nothing on the GPIO. The GPIO is pretty quiet in general. All right. Down here near the audio and HDMI jack, since I'm not really using those. Barely quiet, still staying. You'll notice that. Um, on my oscilloscope, let's see, you can't really see, let me move this up here to the top corner. My scale uh, on the oscilloscope here is, uh, here's, here's minus 85 dB, minus 85 dBm. That's pretty quiet. So stuff that's below that is, um, it's going to be pretty quiet, pretty quiet. Like if you ran that into an audio amplifier, it'd be pretty quiet. But if I move up, look. I mean, I have so much noise going in at the top corner of that uh, processor that I need to rescale so that my signal actually fits on it. But you can see that, oh man, I've got spikes. I've got a spike down here at the bottom. Where's that spike? Oh, my. That was almost. Almost. Wait a second. Wait a second. It is. It is. kind of crazy because my multimeter was telling me it needed to turn off and that just corresponded to five minutes remaining. So yeah, perfect. Perfect. My, uh, my test instruments are helping me in weird and awesome ways, but we're down here at this spike down at 39, 39 megahertz. I wonder what the Raspberry Pi what does the Raspberry Pi CPU, what is the Raspberry Pi CPU frequency? Anybody know what that is? If I go over my Mac desktop, let's see. We are using the Raspberry Pi 3B. Does it have it? 3A, 1.4 gigahertz. The B is 1.5 gigahertz. I don't really see, I, didn't, I mean, we're down below 1.5 gigahertz. I wonder if I put my, let us put my um, FFT at 1.5 gigahertz because I'm seeing a lot of stuff at the low end of the spectrum, which is honestly what I'm most concerned about because that, when we were doing our amplifier, that this noise is what was causing all that hiss and crackle and what I was calling electronic cicadas to leak in to our system. Whoa, what is this chip? This chip right here, what is this chip? Hmm. This is the, man, my old eyes, the MXL up in the top corner. This chip right here that I'm pointing at, this chip is super duper loud. I wonder if it's my, my problem on my power. If I hold my, look at this, I hold my, huh. When I hold my near field probe over that chip, it gets super duper loud. Well, EMI loud, not, not hearing loud. I can't hear it, but I can see it pop up there. Huh, interesting. Something about that chip is very loud. It's, that could be the cause of a lot of my ground problems because it is louder than the processor. The processor is, like compared to that power chip, super, I think that must be the power chip. Hmm, what about the RAM over here? Is it it's pretty quiet, pretty quiet, not really doing much that would Use the RAM. Hmm. 
Hmm. I think it's this chip, guys. Let's check the back of. Let's check the back of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, back here. Am I looking at? So this is. Yeah, this is the processor right here. Yeah, that's the Broadcom processor. All right. So back here, anything. Quiet, 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 quiet. Super quiet, super quiet. This piece of memory. Oh, this isn't memory right here. This is the. This is my I.O. chip that's talking to the Ethernet and to the USB. Oh, my Ethernet fell out. I'm not using it, so it's not a big deal. Um, memory on the back side, super quiet. Over here near where the power is. On the back side, the power is much quieter. Um, the processor is pretty quiet on the back side, which is good. And the GPIO, I mean, I'm not using the GPIO except to get power from my battery. It really looks like this is the chip that is the culprit. So what is that chip? I wonder if I can find that out. Let's, let's see. Anybody? Anybody? So some Raspberry Pi experts are telling me that what are they what are they saying um you're likely to see the reference crystal which is a hundreds of megahertz um yes yes i think i am seeing the reference crystal but what i what i'm really seeing is this chip right here let's make this bigger again so i can this this guy right here whatever this chip is mxl MXL 7704-R3. All right, what is that? What is that ship? We shall find out. Um, I'm always a little nervous to Google, but... Ah, Raspberry Pi! Raspberry Pi, MXL, se there he is, 7704. What is it? Tell me what you are. It's a power management IC. Oh, the power management IC. This makes sense. Look, the M MXL7704 complete power delivery system delivers power on the popular Raspberry Pi model 3. Not Pi 3 model B plus. That's it. That's it. This is it, guys. This is the this is the uh, the culprit of my noise, of the Pi's noise. Um, hmm. So, it does have a relatively low switching frequency. Let's see if it's, let's see if it's six megahertz. I wonder. Let's see. It says one to 2.1 megahertz. But, but that, that switch mode power supply is, Real loud. Okay, you know what? Real quick, let's just let's drop our. Now that we know it's the switch mode power supply, let's drop our. Um. Doop, doop, move that up in the corner. Drop our frequency on an FFT, and take a closer look at what is happening, because you know what 1.21 megahertz is close to. It's getting kind of close to my audio band. And as we learned the hard way over and over again, if you have dirty power, then that is going to definitely get into your ear holes. Definitely, without doubt, over and over again. Okay, let's see if we can get as close as possible to this. Okay, now we have it. There we go. Close as possible to this IC, power management IC that was giving us trouble. You can see I'm popped, the noise has popped way up. Um, yeah, fast. So 
Switch mode power supplies have fairly low switching speeds, but pretty fast, like relatively fast edges. And that is causing these harmonics and it's causing all this noise. So let's change our FFT a little bit so that the stop frequency is now, let's say five megahertz, you know, instead of 500 megahertz. And we will change our, whoops, change our resolution bandwidth to something much lower. And looks like we're going to have to scale our, or move our FFT up a little bit so we can see the noise. Here we go. This is looking at the switch mode power supply. So let's figure out where our spikes are. I got a spike right there. What's that? 1.1 uh, megahertz. Guess, guess what our switch mode power supply says that it switches at? 1 megahertz to 2.1 megahertz and it looks like the one on our raspberry pi is switching at 1.15 megahertz and its power level is up at minus 40 dbm that's it that is almost certainly the cause of all the noise on the raspberry pi board wow wow Huh, how would you mitigate that? How would you mitigate that? Since that's on the, the problem is since it's on the power supply section of the Raspberry Pi, that noise, as we've discussed before, once you get noise on your power supply, it gets everywhere. So the only way to really mitigate that is to control that switching noise and keep it isolated to that section of the board. And the Raspberry Pi has one shared ground plane across the entire, the entire system, so that power supply gets its noise everywhere. I wonder, hmm, hmm, that's a good point. Uh, this is radiated noise, so this noise is getting out into the air, and it is not conducted noise, which is slightly different and you know what R right quick right quick before before we go we can check out conducted noise conducted noise is the noise that travels on the copper i i mean i have the the old power rail probe we can hook that up right quick and check out the noise on our ground plane and our power plane and figure out what's going on so we have this Let's make, this will be our last measurement real quick. We're looking down here at five megahertz. Let's turn on a second channel on my oscilloscope. Let's uh, also show the oscilloscope real quick. So here's my oscilloscope. I have channel two on now. I have my little header adapter for my power rail probe. Let's look at the five volt rail and ground. Right here is ground. Man, I am so glad that I threw on those, those labels. If I hadn't put that label on my header, I would not be able to do this. I'd be having to stop everything to go back, trying to make it work. Um, okay, so now I'm looking at the 5 volt rail. So let's turn on my probe meter. 4.59 volt. Oh, my batteries are... <laughs> Dying quickly. They're dying quickly. Get in there quick and make your measurements. All right, let's zoom in so that we can figure out if this is the actual noise. I'll tell you what, I am seeing some similarities between my radiated and my conducted noise. Channel two is the conducted noise, and channel one is the radiated noise, and they are mighty similar. Uh, so let's do another FFT. Let's do an FFT of channel two. Oh, we need to make sure the settings are the same. So five megahertz, not millihertz, five megahertz. And I can't remember what my, uh, let's, what was my resolution? Oh, a kilohertz. Well, let's make this a kilohertz. Mm, FFT, resolution bandwidth, one kilohertz where are you at my man bring it up uh-oh here we are here we are 
Guess what? 1.5 megahertz. There it is on both FFTs. 1.5 megahertz on my radiated, which is on the left right here. 1.5 megahertz on my conducted. Yep. Yep. That's it, man. Hmm. That's being conducted. Pro? Huh. This, um... 5 volt rail that I'm measuring now would presumably be after any filtering that occurred because it is the 5 volt rail available on GPIO. So this would be the rail that you use to power other devices on your GPIO network or alternatively that you could use to power the Raspberry Pi with from an external like I am doing right now from my battery pack. That's it. That's um Hmm. I'm measuring the 5 volt rail right now. The question in the chat was what are measuring the 3.3 volt or the 5 volt rail, but right now I'm measuring the 5 volt rail, uh, which is as quiet as it can be. It's actually not terribly loud. I'm 10 millivolts per division. I'm using a battery, so this is a best case scenario. So it's uh, one, two, three divisions. So it's about 30 millivolts of noise. That's pretty good. Um, so, let's see, the 5 volt rail is a direct connection to the USB port. And the power management only supplies the lower voltages on the Pi. Oh, so it only supplies the 3.3 volt rail? So, let, let's, I mean, that's really simple. Let's go check the 3.3 volt rail and check out how that's looking. So it goes off the screen, clearly, because I changed my um, offset quite a bit. Let's find it. There we go, 3.2. It's doing a pretty good job. Let's copy, copy uh, voltage to offset. There we are. Boom. Still. Look. Oh, that's even worse. That's even worse. So this is definitely down to the... Oop, down to the... Uh, definitely the switching frequency of the power management IC is, uh, is rolling out into my rail. I think the switch mode power supply, I think the switching, so what was really causing my problem when I was designing my amplifier was the noise on the ground plane. So as soon as I connected the ground of the Raspberry Pi to any part in my system, namely the digital to analog converter, that noise was getting from my Raspberry Pi out into the system and ultimately into my ear holes, which was negative. So I think this power management IC is causing, yeah, it's, it's a kind of a noisy um, rail, but not that bad. Although it is popping up above minus 40 dBm of power over here, so you'd hear that. Um, but I think, I think it's causing noise also on the ground plane, which is the real trouble in the whole matter, which is why I had to start using separate um, DC to DC converters for all of my components. I had to ultimately isolate the DC supply to the Raspberry Pi and then separate DC supplies for every other section of my circuit. Yeah, I think, hmm. Yeah, my breadboard design didn't exactly have a great ground return path. That is very true, and I don't know how I would solve that without making another board, like a pie hat. Um, I will say, I, um, I have a pie hat here. Uh, somewhere. Da, da, da. Up here. So I had this digital analog converter right here. And I did do an experiment that used this digital analog converter, which has the same, same chip that I was using, the PCM, well, it's even a nicer chip, the PCM5102 is what I was using. This is the 5122, and it has the audio jack out that I needed. Um, and when I used this Pi Hat, which has as good of a ground return path as one can have, because every ground is connected through this GPIO header back to the Raspberry Pi, this has, this output has hiss on it. It has the hiss uh, from 
the power supply of the Raspberry Pi. So it has the hiss. Unless you isolate the power supply from your digital analog converter back to the Raspberry Pi somehow, then um, you're going to have that hiss. So there is a, in the chat, they're saying they highly doubt the Pi's switch mode power supply or the culprit. And they're guessing that I had a ground loop and experiencing ground bounce. I could believe that with my like wild circuit design, but when I'm using the hat, um, I have trouble thinking that this, that I would be able to improve this ground loop any better. Um, also, I'll say this, if I use just the Raspberry Pi's audio out right here, which is just built in straight from the uh, system on a chip out to the audio jack, I get that same hiss. So anything on this Raspberry Pi board, if I get audio out of it, I get that hiss. It's very faint. Um, hmm. And I don't know how to correct it without using a separate power supply. So that's, I mean, that's, uh, hmm. There's one of the ways, I mean, the way that I did solve it was to use separate DC to DC adapters. That is a fantastically overboard way of doing it. Another way is probably, well, I think you'd always have to uh, supply your analog circuitry with a quiet power supply and then have a dirty power supply that actually communicated to the Raspberry Pi. That is, I have a amplifier made by a company called Hi-Fi Berry. They make an amplifier and in order to use the amplifier correctly, you have to power the amplifier separately and then the amplifier has a 5 volt section that then feeds the Raspberry Pi so that there is no power supply noise coming from the Raspberry Pi back up to the amp. All the power travels from the amp down to the Raspberry Pi and that's how they do it. So they isolate it too. Um, and it is pointed out that the Pi's onboard audio is terrible because it just uses pulse with auto uh, modulation. And yes, you have hit the nail on the head, which is why I was using all these crazy DACs to begin with, is because the built-in audio of the Raspberry Pi is just garbage. So it kind of set me down the path of I need to use a separate digital analog converter chip. And then that set me down the path of, well, how do I make this sound good when it's connected to the Raspberry Pi? And I really think that switch mode power supply on the Raspberry Pi, I just can't, um, I can't see a way around it without like isolating that power supply. So I am conflating general digital noise with switchers noise. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. I am conflating the two because um, that was, I will say, the, the switcher's noise is the thing that was the loudest when measuring with my, with my near-field antenna, so that is the loudest radiated noise. Um, but you do get quite a bit of digital noise as well, uh, which is the thing that makes it sound like there's like communications happening in the background. It feels like you're privy to a secret Martian communication, so that is definitely digital. But I am, what I think is happening is the switch mode power supply raises the noise level. So now my signal to noise level is lower. And then the digital noise is the thing that is causing the, because the switch mode power supply would probably be more white noise or pink noise oriented, like a <sighs> But the digital noise sounds like <laughs> It sounds like music, like really bad, weird music. So, um, and, and it is being pointed out in the chat that I can't hear a megahertz. Yes, I can't hear anything above about 15 kilohertz, uh, but I would get frequencies down. And I really, I now I'm thinking that maybe it's a signal to noise ratio that's causing the digital noise to actually get into the speakers. So if you want to, if you want a quiet Raspberry Pi, I think the trick is keep your analog electronics powered separately from the Raspberry Pi and then power the Raspberry Pi with a dirty side of your supply. So probably you need at least, um, two, two DC to DC converters, one for your quiet section and one for your dirty section. Which, I mean, honestly, a lot of digital boards, a lot of 
professional electronics, that is how they are made. They will have an analog section, which is super quiet and very well isolated and very well designed. And then a dirty digital section, which is just kind of like five volts that kind of feeds down to 3.3 and 1.8 volts. And it's just wildly loud. Kind of a lot of talking there. I'm gonna hang out in the chat after this uh, and and probably get just berated and educated uh, all at the same time. But it's been it's been a great day. It's uh, Band Shirt Tuesday. Let me know your band shirt. I'm going to take this Baby Friday off, and I hope you take Baby Friday off and enjoy the day. No no O scope wizard uh, on Baby Friday because I'm working on the wrap up video for the amplifier and setting up the next big quest because I love quests and so we got we got to be on one I feel like we need to be on one um I'm gonna hang out in the chat I don't know all the nerds in the world so please share this with the nerd in your life and I will see you guys next week bye